I'd like to talk about pulseless electrical activity, and this is on page 80 of your workbook. And uh, PEA is an interesting rhythm. I call it the Monty Python of cardiac arrest rhythms because uh, PEA can present as any rhythm in which you might reasonably expect to find a pulse, but in fact the patient is vital signs absent. So they have some semblance of an organized rhythm on your heart monitor, uh, but they're apneic, unconscious, and pulseless. And uh, so they're essentially in cardiac arrest, and we treat them like cardiac arrest with uh, CPR and other measures. So this is why I don't have a rate or PUAs or PR or QRS or ratio or rhythm, because it can present like anything. Now, in my experience, oftentimes PEA presents in an um, idioventricular rhythm without a pulse, but it could present in a sinus rhythm or junctional rhythm or uh, any one of a variety of different rhythms. Uh, without a pulse. And I say Monty Python-ish because um, it's been my experience that people will sometimes um, uh, have uh, a patient who has a rhythm and they do have a pulse and they are breathing but they're unconscious and they're unstable and over the course of treating them for an hour, two hours, slowly they lose their pulse, their cardiac output diminishes to the point where they become pulseless and sometimes they don't recognize that because the change has been subtle over a period of time and all they see is the same rhythm on the monitor. And I've seen this on a number of occasions. And sometimes it just takes a fresh pair of eyes to look at that patient and say, uh, hmm, this patient does not have a pulse. And they go, oh, you're right, they don't have a pulse. Um, you know, so they, uh, I've, you know, I have this little Monty Python scenario going on in my head when I see PEA and they go, oh, well, um, your patient doesn't have a pulse. Oh, no, he, he's, um, yes, he's got a rhythm. Look at his rhythm. He's perfectly fine. Uh, well, your patient's uh, got rigor mortis. Oh, no, it's just arthritis. That's all terrible arthritis. Uh, but your patient's decomposing. Oh, no, it's just running shoes, smelly running shoes. Horrible thing, those smelly running shoes. So, um, uh, you know, if you ever encounter another ambulance crew or paramedic crew or hospital staff who don't recognize PEA, I wouldn't be too judgmental because, as I say, sometimes they start out with the same rhythm and deteriorate to the point where they become pulseless and, um, you know, it goes unrecognized. Now, the key with pulseless electrical activity is to do the standard CPR, but we want to look for an underlying cause and treat it. So um, the Advanced Cardiac Life Support uh, course uh, lists five H's and five T's, and let me just go through these. So the five H's are hypovolemia, hypoxia, hydrogen ion, which is acidosis, hyper or hypokalemia, and hypothermia. Now, um, you might think, well, if the patient's hypovolemic and in a PEA, uh, all I need to do is fluid resuscitate those patients. But the reality is uh, pretty difficult to resuscitate someone who's hypovolemic and in a pulseless electrical activity because for all intents and purposes, if they reach the point where they're in cardiac arrest, they've exsanguinated. They've lost almost their entire blood volume, if not their entire blood volume, and uh, they'll be difficult if not impossible to resuscitate. So chances of resuscitating those patients are poor. Now, this would be an extremely low cardiac output state. And I say low output because the old term for PEA was EMD, which is electromechanical dissociation. And EMD, that term suggests that the patient has electrical activity, but no mechanical activity or no contraction of the heart. But we know that most of these cases are actually PEAs. They have electrical activity, they have cardiac contraction, but the output is so low that they're pulseless and apneic and unresponsive, and hypovolemia would be one cause. Hypoxia would be another, and if they're that profoundly hypoxic that they're in a PEA, very difficult and not impossible to resuscitate them. The, the acidosis patients are typically the chronic acidotic patients, the hemodialysis patients, or the, the diabetic ketoacidosis patients, hyper and hypocalcemia, um, or kalemia, rather, we have to uh, look for evidence of that. Hypothermia would be another cause in those we resuscitate. They're not uh, dead until they're warm and dead. The five T's include uh, drug overdoses, so tablets, cardiac tamponade, tension pneumothorax, thrombolysis, or thrombosis, rather, so this would be a patient with a massive MI. We'd have no way of determining that until post-mortem examination and uh, thrombosis or pulmonary embolus. So we look for, you know, evidence suggests of that, like a DVT, um, those kinds of things. So we have to look for these causes and try to um, um, determine what they are and, and uh, reverse them. Tension pneumothorax might be the most readily reversible one of the bunch.